வணக்கம் ஒன் ஆஃப் த மஸ்ட் நோ இஸ் த பயோஜாமெட்ரி ஆஃப் த ராம்பிக் ஃபிளாப் ஆர் த லிம்பர்க் ஃபிளாப் ஹவு இஸ் இட் பிளான்ட் அண்ட் வாட் ஆர் த வேரியேஷன்ஸ் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஆல் த ராம்பாய்ட் இஸ் அ பேரலோகிராம் இன் விச் தி அட்ஜஸ்ட் சைட்ஸ் ஆர் ஆஃப் அன்ஈக்வல் லைன்ஸ் தி ஆப்போசிட் ஆங்கிள்ஸ் ஆர் ஈக்குவல் அண்ட் தி அவைலபிள் ஆங்கிள்ஸ் ஆர் நான் ரைட் ஆங்கிள்ட் If the sides are of equal length, it is called a rhombus. The classic rhomboid flap is otherwise known as the Limburg flap which was described in 1963 by Alexander Alexandrovich Limburg. Characteristically, the angles are 120 degrees and 60 degrees. As we have mentioned, it is the defect that is in the shape of a rhomboid. This rhomboid is drawn as follows. The four points are marked A, B, A. C and D. AB is the short diagonal. CD is the long diagonal. The angle CAD measures 120 degrees and the angle ACB measures 60 degrees. Once the defect has been created in the form of a rhombus ABCD, the short diagonal AB is extended to a point E where the distance of ab is equal to be from the point e a parallel line is drawn to the line bd and equal in length to the line bd up to a point called f so bd is equal to ef in length and bd is parallel to the line ef this point f is the pivot point of the rhomboid flap so the line d b e and f forms the flap that is marked to cover the rhomboid defect a b c d so how does this flap move the flap represented by point b moves to point a and the point e moves to point c the point c is the maximum tension of the flap it is called the promontory of the flap what is the resulting suture line after raising and inserting the flap remember the side that is adjacent to the flap is removed the flap inset is done on the three sides shown and the this is the leading edge of the flap so once the flap is inset this is the suture line the point b is sutured to point a the point e is sutured to point c and the point f is sutured to point b and the suturing is done we saw an example of a limburg flap for a rhomboid defect however for each rhomboid defect four limburg flaps are possible the first example was when we extended the short diagonal and drew the flap in this direction however we can also extend the diagonal and then draw the flap in this direction which will raise a flap based superiorly the short diagonal can also be extended and the flap marked like this or it can be marked superiorly based thus four limburg flaps are possible for each rhomboid defect we also need to know about the deformental flap how does it differ from the rhomboid flap and when is it indicated and what is the ultimate suture line after the deformental flap as opposed to the limburg flap the deformental flap is a modification of the limburg flap where the angle is more than 120 degrees when one of the angles of the rhomboid is more than 120 degrees the deformental flap is planned here the short diagonal is extended the short diagonal here is ab and the other edges are c and d the short diagonal ab is extended and the long diagonal cd is also marked now the side of the defect bd is also extended these two extended lines are bisected by the line be 
which is equal in length to AC. Now, from the point E, a line is drawn parallel to the long diagonal CD. The length of this line EF is equal to the length of CB. So, CB is equal to EF and the line EF is parallel to the long diagonal CD. So, when the flap DBEF is raised, the point B goes to A, the point F goes towards this point B and the angle E sits in the angle formed by C. The resulting suture line will be as described for the Limburg flap. Here there is a difference in that in the Limburg flap the suture line was more transverse like this but here it moves upward because the flap has also advanced.